Hello, everyone, and welcome to Energy Analysis with Revit and Insight. My name is Juliana, and I work in marketing here at MicroCat. And today's presenter is Julian Niño. By the end of the webinar, you have learned something new to help you with your energy analysis, and that is definitely worth 30 minutes of your time. Throughout the webinar, you can ask a question at any given point on the left-hand corner. You can ask Julian to revisit a step or ask any questions. This is your time, and we want you to make the most of it. And in the upper left-hand corner, you will find links to our MicroCAD Productivity Tools info in case you're interested in that, as well as our website. Also, make sure to check our YouTube channel. We post all of our webinars there at the end, so you can share with colleagues or rewatch it on your own time. And without further ado, we'll pass it on to Julian. Thanks, Juliana, for the introduction. So as uh, Juliana mentioned, I'm one of the AEC application specialists here at MicroCAD. And today, we are bringing you energy analysis within Revit and Insight. So as probably you are already familiar, Revit has a uh, build up uh, tool for running uh, cooling loads and analysis. But as part of your AC collection, out of this insight is a cloud simulation tool for building energy analysis. So uh, as insight is part of your AC collection subscription, the energy analysis that is part of, of insight is going to be integrated uh, within Revit. So a plugin is needed uh, for Revit to use the heating, uh, cooling loads calculations, and any other type of analysis since uh, Revit uh, 2017. Additional to that, if you have the AC collection, you're going to have access to Formit Pro, uh, but for Formit Pro, you're no longer require this type of plugin. So you can see uh, the multiple capabilities that this, um, cloud tool has to offer you. And you probably are wondering, so where can I have access to it, right? So the energy analysis feature is part of Insight and also uh, is going to allow you to quickly identify energy performance drivers in your project such as HVAC, uh, maybe some lighting, power density, plug loads, glazing properties, orientation, and many more other features that you can change within your model. And the results on, of insight can represent multiple potential outcomes, right? So, and you're going to say, well, I have my AC collection, I have my Revit, so where do I go? where I'm going to have this at your Autodesk desktop app, right? And just either lighting analysis from Revit, the solar analysis from Revit, and last but not least, you can install a plugin if you have a previous version of Revit, such as uh, Revit 2020 uh, up to 2017. So the capabilities, as I already mentioned, um, as you can see, uh, are going to be available on your cloud insight. And additionally to that, uh, you are going to be able to identify those performance drivers. Uh, the main feature that you're going to see uh, with insight is, is going to give you a key metric. And that key metric is going to be the EUI or energy use intensity. So all factors mentioned it earlier, such as lighting, HVAC, system ties, and plug loads are the factors that are going to affect uh, your EUI. And this is going to be the key metric uh, for benchmarking your buildings. So when it comes to the EUI, um, basically you're going to have the annual energy use divided by the total area of your building. And as you can see, um, the insight uh, tool compares the EUI to either ASHRAE 90.1 or the Architecture 2030, 2030 benchmark. And this is really, uh, really good because it's going to allow you to get closer to those 
uh, performance levels that you need for your for your project. So let me jump ahead uh, right away to Revit and start uh, showing you where can you use these tools. So as you can see uh, on my screen, um, I just have a basic uh, a basic uh, architecture model. And when it comes to the tools that you are going to use for energy analysis, you're going to come right here to your ribbon and on the analyze tab at the end of your of your bar, you're going to see available the energy optimization tools, right? In addition to that, you have uh, two other features that maybe we are going to discuss at the end of the webinar. So the main feature that you're going to see right here is that you have the option to uh, change energy settings for your for your project. And with that, it's going to require you a couple of uh, settings to adjust first that are going to be important for your energy model. So the first thing that you actually want to make sure that you have set up is your location. So with the location, you're going to be able to use uh, real-time data from the location of your project, meaning that you're going to have any additional information on weather data, such as weather files, and you have a couple of options. Either you can use the default city map list or the internet mapping service. The main difference between these two is that can, you can either use uh, the default city, city list for an HVAC sizing uh, type of analysis, right? And when it comes to the internet mapping uh, service, you do want to use this for uh, energy simulation and as well calculating heating or cooling loads. In addition to that, after you have already your, your model pretty much set up, or if you want to start working such as a mass model building, the only requirements for you is to go ahead on the top right and define the energy settings for your project. So once you're, you have either your 3D model or your building mass model, you can start defining those energy settings. And you can see right here, you have a couple of modes to define your uh, energy analytical model. When it comes to uh, how do you define the mode or which mode do you want to use for your energy model, it, it will depend on the stage of your project. So let's say you're on a conceptual phase or on a DDE phase of your project, maybe you want to use the conceptual mass because that one right there doesn't have uh, defined, as an example, rooms or maybe special features such as windows, doors, or materials. But then when you move forward on your project, maybe you want to start using uh, a mode such as the uh, conceptual masses and building elements, or even the rooms or spaces. So from here, you can start defining all the elements from your project and how can you manage those energy settings. So once you're comfortable with the information from your project, you can as well start editing uh, settings uh, on energy, such as uh, the percentage of blazing or window to wall ratio, as, as we are familiar with it. And as well, you can start changing some um, basic stuff, stuff as shading, or maybe why not changing the type of system that is going to save your project and get in more detail regarding, as an example, equipment efficiency, or why not start changing the schedule for your for your project? So once you have all that defined, you can start uh, creating an energy model. So right now I already created uh, create one as it's going to take a couple of minutes to do so. And once you have created your energy model, so as an example right here, I create uh, a conceptual uh, building and mass uh, element energy analysis. And you can see it's going to define multiple elements within my project. And this analytical uh, space model is going to allow us to define uh, different elements when it comes to energy use on our, on our project. So once you have created your energy model, 
uh, you can either uh, generate uh, your analytical model with this uh, button right here. You can generate your energy model from here. And once you're ready, you can just uh, go ahead and uh, launch the inside tool, which is the optimize button right here. So once you click it, or once you have created your energy model, you are going to receive an email from Autodesk letting you know that your uh, energy model has been created and is ready to visualize on the inside uh, platform. So let me go ahead to inside and show you what you're going to get. So right away on Autodesk Insight, you're going to be able to see all the insights that you have created, which are going to include all the models that you have. If after running your first model, um, you don't see you don't see it inside of these um, bookmarks right here or these thumbnails, probably all your models are going to be right here located in all uncategorized. Since you get in this, uh, in this folder, you should be able to move it to your actual project. And from there, you can start uh, navigating and seeing your, your models. So just remember one thing. To access to this site, it's going to ask you for your Autodesk credentials. And it's going to ask you for your password. So I have already mine set up. So once you're here, um, you also are going to have the options to see uh, these three docs on the right of each insight that you have created. And that is going to be the more button. So with this button, you are going to be able to either rename uh, your projects, you are going to be able to add a picture to customize your project, or add multiple models inside, inside that insight. So let me go ahead uh, and getting into uh, this project right here that we just uh, were showing you. So once you're inside your actual uh, project, you are going to have these thumbnails right here, which are going to show you the different scenarios that you have created. So as I showed you on, on Revit, I have a model from conceptual masses, and I have a model created from building elements. So you're going to have basic information before accessing your model, and that is going to be the EUI. So in this case right here, I have these units, but you can change the units as well from your main hub. And on the right, you are going to be able to see the model comparison for your models and the difference on energy use. As well, you can change the view type of your projects. It's going to have additional information and you can add um, something as well as uh, currency for your project. So let me go right here and maybe just uh, change the unit for those uh, metric users. And if we go back, you can see right here the change on the UI. As well, you can uh, add annual costs to your project or just keep it on the EUI. And as well, you can change the importance of your project. Something additional that you're going to fight on Insight, well, is the main model comparison, as you can see. Additional to that, you can create new comments for the people on your team, letting them know that you have created these models and maybe they need to adjust or make some changes. And last but not least, you can uh, add members to your Insight. That way, they can access the model. They can either edit it or just view your, your model. So let me jump right in, in first, our conceptual mass model. And you can see uh, what is the information that you're going to have available. So the main thing that you're going to see is a view mode. And if you are familiar with either uh, one of the Autodesk viewers or Beam 360 or Autodesk Docs, you are going to be able to see a 3D view of your project. And the navigation is pretty much just the same. It's going to allow you to rotate, to pan, to move, and even uh, walk in inside of your project as a first person. It's going to ju function just the same as Beam 360 and Autodesk Docs viewers, right? So after that, you can as well decide which is going to be the home of your project and you're going to have a view cube. 
On the top right, you are going to have the option to compare scenarios after you change some settings on your on your model. You have the option to, after creating those scenarios, just uh, save them and they are going to appear right here on the top left of your screen. In addition to that, you are, have the option to either visualize your 3D model or if you have created some type of photovoltaic analysis, you can do it as well. In addition to that, is have this cool option right here that is going to give you a quick walkthrough of all these things that I'm just showing you. So if you go ahead and click the question mark, it's going to give you a reminder of all the tools that you have available. So after we are familiar with the navigation of our model, we can start uh, going around the uh, thumbnails that we have available to making changes to our inside model. So right here, the first thing that you're going to notice is the benchmark comparison. Right here is going to tell you what is the status of your project and the building um, history of any changes that you make to your project. So you can see right here uh, that I have made multiple iterations of my model and make a uh, good amount of changes to just uh, double check and verify which is going to be the best option for me and the energy analysis, right? So after you're familiar with these two tabs, you can start seeing another couple of thumbnails, which are the ones that include all the features related to energy modeling or energy analysis, right? So uh, these things that you can see right here, thumbnails are referring to any other feature that you want to change on your model. And it's going to give you the option to change between the actual settings that you created on the first time you access the model and export it right here to Insight. And out of this Insight also have a couple of features that are going to allow you to make changes to, to that setting. So right here, uh, once I click on the thumbnail, you're going to be able to see that I can adjust or change the operating schedule for, for my model. Right now, I'm going to show you uh, a change. So for example, let's say I want to say that my building is going to be uh, operating 24 seven, right? So automatically the energy is going to go up and you are going to see that the UI is calculated right away. And this is going to be your energy status indicator. So you can see is a silly feature, a, a sad face that it's showing you, well, this is not what you want. You actually want to reduce the energy consumption on your project. So in this case, I want to show you that these elements right here that you see, uh, the triangle is going to show you the actual option that you create from your uh, beam model, in this case, the Revit model. So if we go back and select that option, we are going to see that the best option regarding energy is going to be the one that I set up right away from my, uh, my actual uh, model. So once we start uh, just playing with this, we can start defining, okay, so I want to have the best HVAC system for my project. And you can see that we are start going down on the energy consumption and we are getting close to the threshold for complying with the 2030 architecture challenge, right? So most of the time, uh, these type of features, you can start selecting them and giving them options to your uh, MEP consultants or designers on your team, letting them know that you want to get close to this type of energy consumption, right? And to make this happen, you need to work with them to make, uh, to make sure that they select the uh, correct system types and they are aligned with the, uh, with the requirements for the city or the energy requirements if they are pursuing uh, a certification such as LEED or any other type of sustainable certification. So right here, let me just move the last, in this case will be the lighting. And with those three features that I just changed, I'm going to be below my benchmark and I can go even further and maybe why not try for net zero implementing any other type of uh, energy savings to, to this uh, model right here. 
So this is the first feature. I just wanted to show you uh, what happened when, when we use a conceptual mass uh, model. Let me go back to Revit. So right now you can see the only feature that I change right here when I create the conceptual mass is I just give him uh, a minor uh, option letting them know that, well, I want to have a 40% window to wall ratio and basic uh, inputs when it comes to my energy consumption. But uh, what will happen if I start creating a more detailed uh, model, right? So I'm going to go back and I believe I already have my conceptual model mass right here. There we go. You can see right here that this model is going to have much detail, right? It's going to include all the features such as shading, uh, is going to have the information on my roof, on my walls, and my windows are going to have the specific uh, U values and all the information that you want to add from your model, or you can use as well the default from the from inside. So right here you Louis, can see as well. Louis, yeah. we have a question. Um, it's um, how do you add inputs like lightning and HVAC. All right. So if you if you want to use the basic inputs from inside, you can just go right here to your HVAC or to your lighting efficiency. So it's going to just show you basic inputs, right? So it's going to show you either if you choose to use the H Ashra BAB or a high efficient BAB, or uh, maybe I don't know, maybe just uh, a couple of um, cooling and heating systems, right? Same thing is going to apply for lighting efficiency. It's going to show you um, just watts per square foot, and it's going to it's going to allow you to either uh, go below what you have on your beam, or uh, go um, go uh, for a better option. And if you want to change it uh, directly on Revit. You can uh, do it uh, right here from the energy settings. You can go just advance and go right here. For example, for uh, HBAC system, it's going to allow you to edit the information that you want to use either for outdoor air or you can change the system type for uh, from the basic information that it is included uh, within Revit. Just uh, just a clarification is not going to be as detailed as uh, uh, BEM uh, software uh, or energy modeling software, but it's going to give you a good input uh, when it comes to the use or selection of uh, energy modeling uh, equipment type, right? So right there, you're going to be able to change your HVAC. And in addition to that, if you want to make additional changes to the systems, uh, you need to go, let me just double check. Uh, I always I always lose this icon, it's, uh, it's really small. Let me go to systems, uh, no. No. I always lose this icon. Oh no, this are no options. No, I'm sorry about this one. No, your units. No, the parameters. I believe there we go. Right here on manage, your manage tab. You're going to go right here to your MEP settings. And you can start either for the mechanical settings, just changing, making some adjustments to your to your systems. You can as well manage your uh, templates. In addition to that, let me just make a quick uh, show of this. Let me go back. Just give me a minute. All right, right here, back to your MEP settings. And this is the most important one. You're going to click on additional settings, right? And from the additional settings, 
uh, you are going to be able to change your building type. So for those who are energy models and modelers and are more familiar with the space types, they can right here uh, start changing the space types from your uh, Revit model. So if you have created rooms and you want to start defining the space types, you can do it from here. You can create maybe a template, uh, a view template to assign those elements. And as well, once you have defined either your building type or your space type, you can start modifying the elements within that uh, space type, right? So for example, um, right here, we are working on, uh, on a college project, right? But maybe we want to go ahead and just start creating the lobby. So from the lobby, I can start changing the values for either my lighting low density, which you are maybe more familiar for what's to square feet. I can change as well the power low density, maybe add the infiltration from your, uh, for your project. And from there, you can start changing uh, such parameters as heating set point or cooling set point. So all this information is if you want to be like really detailed when it comes to your first energy analysis, you can make the change right here from manage and look for your MEP settings and change the building space uh, type settings. So that will be uh, right there. And I will just recommend when you are creating your analysis, make sure that you're either using your rooms or spaces and conceptual masses and or building elements. So this is for insight. Let me go back. And if you want to be like more detail, uh, something additional that you can do is after you create that first it, uh, iteration of your project, you are going to have the information right here on BIM, and then you can start uh, changing your uh, your settings, right? If you want to be like really, really in depth when it comes to your energy analysis, within Revit, uh, what you will need to do is start assigning systems uh, and analytical systems to your project, meaning that you are going to create a system, uh, maybe a chill water system or um, an air cool uh, chiller, and start defining the air handling unit for your project. This is going to size your HVAC system, but you can go as far as to uh, set up an energy analysis for the system you are uh, creating within your model. All right, let me go back. And last thing that I wanted to show you is at the end of your uh, thumbnails, you are going to see the option to either uh, create um, PV efficiency for your model. So with this tool, you can as well start uh, defining which type of PV, PV system do you want to use on your model, or if you want to uh, just say maybe uh, I want to cover some type of surface and maybe do an analysis if I want to actually add a PV system on my project. Uh, last but not least, and I believe this is a really important feature for the architects, um, and is when you come right here uh, to your to your hub, you uh, are going to have the option to change either the utility rates for your insight. And if you come here to your profile and your services, you are going to be able to share this information uh, with the architecture 2030 uh, challenge. So you just need to make sure that you turn off the setting right here is going to ask for your information and you should be able to start sharing from your basic uh, design uh, up to the construction of your project and letting them know that yes you are making the the effort and you are making sure that your project is being um, is following the requirements for uh, 2030 and you're uh, either uh, surpassing the benchmark or uh, you're close to it, uh, close to the benchmark and you just need to make a couple of adjustments. All right, so back to right here. Just one last couple of things that I want to mention you. 
and this could be important for those uh, that have energy modeling on your team. Uh, the engine that Autobest Insight uses is the DOE2 and Energy Plus as engines, meaning that you can as well start uh, running heating and cooling loads reports. Then you can share them to with your mechanical engineer and they can double check either on their BEM software or they can as well use your uh, use your uh, enter, uh, your model created from Revit and the insights that you provide to them to verify that the that the analysis that you run is getting close to uh, more specific design uh, on the MEP side, right? Additional to that, you can do solar isolation and surfaces. Uh, you can calculate the PV energy production. And additional to that, you can either start running daylight analysis and illuminance renderings, especially for um, those architects that really want to make sure that your space have has good daylight and doesn't uh, provide glare to the occupants of your space. So you can uh, run this type of analysis as well. And there is a feature that is going to allow you to generate information for lead projects. And last but not least, uh, remember that you can either work with us with training, or if you want to start uh, doing the analysis perform of your project, we can guide you through it. So that's the last thing that I wanted to share with you. And now we have some time for the Q&A. Thank you, Julian, for that wonderful presentation. Um, as a reminder for everyone, you can ask questions on the left-hand corner. Um, I already see some questions coming in. And the first one is, is there a plugin required to run solar analysis? Okay, so for solar, yes. Actually, uh, right here, let me go back. Let me go out of this. And on the top right, uh, you're going to see the solar analysis uh, plugin as well as the lighting analysis plugin. These two are going to be available uh, from your Autodesk desktop app. So when you launch it, uh, you're going to see right here on the updates, the option to download the uh, lighting analysis for Revit and the solar analysis for Revit. This applies from 2021 up to 2022, and probably when they launch 23, is they are going to appear right there as well. And if you are using a previous version, you can uh, launch your inside uh, website, and on the main hub, you are going to have right here on the top uh, an option for support, and you're going to click what it says download, and on the download, it's going to allow you to uh, download the plugins for previous versions. So right here, you can start downloading from 2016 up to 2020. And well, it's going to give you additional information on the browser that you need to use to download it. Thank you. And uh, next question. Um, can I export my model geometry to an energy model software? Yes. You can export your geometry. Let me just uh, show it to you. So you can do it from Revit after you create your analytical space model or you have created a basic uh, mass model. You can come here to your file tab, uh, look for the export. And right here is the option for GVXML. And if you have been using Revit for a couple of years, previously, uh, you will be familiar with the green building uh, studio that was part of Autodesk, and now they have changed it to um, to Insight, right? But after you select the option to export it, you're going to see that it's going to allow you to export the GVXML uh, file to um, uh, one of these four options. And these are the same four options that you are going to see on your energy settings. And you just need to make sure to add the information that you need to share with the third party uh, energy modeling software. And from inside, uh, let me go back right here to the home. 
All right. So once you're on your on your hub and you select your uh, your projects, let me go back right here. If you hit the um, uh, more button, uh, this is the these are going to be the three dots. You are going to hit right here where it says export. So you can export it uh, to Energy Plus. I believe is going to export an IDF file, or you can export it to GVXML or the OE2. So these are going to be the three options to export to your NLG modeling software. And it's going to depend on, on the information that you want to grab for your uh, energy modeling software. And if it's only the geometry, I will recommend it to do it directly from Revit. That way, if you see something that you didn't want to export, you can make uh, easily and really fast the changes and then export it again. Or if you already create your insight, you can do it from here. Awesome, thank you. Um, and we have another question from Andres. Um, he's asking if insights, it's an additional feature to Revit. Yes, so um, so the the things that are included with the out of the box Revit are going to be these elements right here. So once you go to your analyze tab, right, and you go to your energy optimization, you have the option to create system analysis, right? And if you are more familiar with the systems uh, type, right? you can calculate uh, heating and cooling loads once you have this analyze option, right? So uh, when it comes to uh, the energy analysis, and let me just give you an example. When you click system analysis, it's going to allow you to either do uh, heating and loading sizing, right? Or an annual building energy simulation. And once you run it, it's going to be uh, process by your uh, Revit. So it's going to run on the background, it's going to allow you to keep working, but if you want to access the insights, that is going to be part of your AC uh, collection. And this is the section right here when you go ahead and click optimize, and this is going to launch right away the insights for you to access. So right here, you can see that is sending me right away to my conceptual masses. And just one small reminder, every time that you make changes to your conceptual mass model or your uh, building uh, uh, mass uh, elements or room or spaces, just make sure that you delete your previous energy model and create a new one with those settings that you just changed. Awesome. Thank you, Julian. And as a reminder for everyone, if you want to learn these topics in detail, you can always take a custom training with Julian or someone else in our team. And we also offer group classes online. Um, so yeah, be sure to be checking the MicroCAP website for future webinars. And that's it, that concluded our webinar today. Thank you everyone for attending. Have a nice day.